Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. A little, a little sick, but uh, very happy to have this conversation with you. Um, so I want to start by saying that the past decades in the digital era have completely shifted the way we consume and think and understand fashion and influence. Um, and the way consumers make their decisions as well. So in this session, we'll be looking at how influencers and digital creators have entered an industry in recent years and how their voices have contributed to bringing a positive impact. Um, so early 2000 uh, bloggers, you know, that was internet uh, 1.0. Uh, then in 2005, YouTube was launched. And the term YouTubers, um, you know, was uh, evoked in 2008. So we went from bloggers to YouTubers and then Instagram changed the game in 2010 and completely sort of um, uh, made uh, any, any expectations that we had of how we converse and how we share fashion uh, online anew. So now there's like a huge change as well. And we're looking at um we're looking at TikTok. we'll talk about this a, a bit later um but what i really want to to tell you and ask you is when you entered that digital space where you're creating fashion conversation um how did you first engage with this era of bloggers before talking about your own work and how did you um understand what was changing in the industry so from bloggers to youtubers how did you interact with them <laughs> afterwards how um are you doing it yourself okay thank you very much and uh, for everyone watching i want to say also from my side that i'm very excited to be in conversation specifically with you because <laughs> i want like uh, everyone to you know when i first arrived in paris last uh one year ago when i was just starting style.com pierre was like first one to catch me in a way and it was the literally the only meeting I did in the cafe we were sitting freezing but talking for like hour and so about like fashion magazines and our past and childhood and everything so I was telling to him that we have made to this day in just one year so it's super exciting that we are now talking to the in the professional way <laughs> so to to go back to the uh, your question uh, that will uh, would start uh, telling where I come from. So I come from Georgia, which is uh, uh, very specific and important to mention in this case, because Georgia is not uh, the first country you would associate with someone that is very uh, digitally um, um, ahead of times or has uh, a people who are playing a major game in the digital world being influencers or bloggers so let's say this thing is just becoming a thing in Georgia to have influencers as one of the tool uh, when you have a brand but uh, back in the days, I'm coming from the time when I was probably one of the first guy in my hometown, in the small town in Georgia, not in Tbilisi, which I had the internet connection. It was like 2004 or five, and had like the, this PC uh, computer. So I was trying to go like dig into the internet, and but the connection, of course, was not that good. So that time... Uh, first, probably that I typed probably was uh, uh, the Google and then I typed MTV because uh, I wanted to know I, I, I'm an MTV kid. So I wanted to find out all what's happening outside the TV world about that. And then when I typed Vogue one day, then I discovered everything that was uh, around. So then like slowly I went to the Tumblr, which at that time was one of the biggest uh, platform of fashion to speak, share, and like inspirational board for all of us. So re-blogging, uh, re-sharing all the uh, amazing pictures. Then it came Twitter for me. And then I went to Instagram and probably I'm one of the first who arrived on Instagram who had the account, my personal account, in the very first month when it was launched when we still thought it was just a photo editing application, like many of us still were thinking about it, so just to edit a picture. And 
that time around, I had no one playing this influencing game. And to be honest, I'm telling all of this that, that <clears throat> never even after uh, being uh, going like out of the country and going to the international uh, uh, in different countries in Europe and seeing how much influential influencers and digital media is, I've never been myself that much into or influenced something that I was seeing on YouTube, bloggers or vloggers, or seeing uh, someone on Instagram, uh, like many of people maybe around me or in the industry or outside of industry could be. So uh, I've never watched fully a big vlog or blog, to be honest. I've never, I mean, I was more of a someone who would like prefer to read maybe, but then when fashion blogging at the beginning started to writing uh, the opinions, that time I remember and I miss, but then it all turned just posting pictures, becoming super random. And then just Instagram arrived in a way, so they all moved there. So the wording that was probably the most interesting part of blogging, if we can, can, can say so, was missing. So I catch that time for a few years, but then when it became also picture, visual, just talking about the looks and stuff and just showing us from breakfast to the to the end, becoming like a reality show. And uh, I feel like it, it was not that much of me. And uh, I still kind of miss the time when people were like writing stuff even if they were considered and bloggers. And uh, I remember you being one of the uh, like pioneers in trying the different format in yourself to have actually the material to read. And it was never about how you or someone other looks, even if I want to tell everyone that you are seeing one of the chicest dressed men mostly during Not quite today. Today, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they have yeah, no I mean, I'm I mean, sick. I mean, but I, I want to ask you, were you aware of these bloggers? Because, you know, to me, and like you just said, bloggers were seen uh, as sort of uh, journalist wannabes. You know, they had an opinion and they were writing, you know, I think Brian Boy, I think Susie Bubble, these first generations of bloggers who are still actually today, you know, very much uh, alive and they, they're still on, on the landscape. But were you aware of these people? Let's say I remember, uh, let's say one of the, First, uh, like, I think the pioneer of blogging is Brian Boy, obviously. And he's still, and for me, he's like the person who managed to reinvent himself and always stayed relevant until now. And being today editor-in-chief of the magazine is one of the peak, I mean, probably there is more coming, but he made it. And it's like two years of history where he always was one of the first to discover the new platform and apply it on himself. I remember obviously Susie, who was also at the start. I remember uh, Tavi Gavinson, I think uh, I pronounce, I don't know if, if I pronounce her name correctly. She was also that time because of her age, one of the, let's say most uh, interesting, uh, uh, considering how young she was uh, and I remember all the work and collaborations uh, she was uh, doing that time I remember Garance I remember Man Repeller I mean I, I when I started to learn English to be honest fashion made me and my interest of fashion made me uh, teach it faster and reading all these blogs and reading all this I mean, I'm the child coming from the, the Fashion Spot Forum, which was one of the biggest discussion uh, platform ever of all the fashion insiders, outsiders, and just fashion fans. And I'm coming from there. And these people like the who were sharing their opinion. I mean, I sometimes I also visit this forum again because there, there are some people who have a, a the opinion to read and uh, think about so many of the people who started the time and I knew about them they are still there but some of them really transformed 
uh, not the ones that I mentioned, because I see, let's say, Suzy uh, with the articles at BOF, I read just one of them, like, let's say, three days ago, the newest one. And uh, Brian having his own, I mean, the magazine under his control. And there are a few more who still try to share the opinion. But I, this, when I knew we were going to speak, I visited some of them and they're all gone. Either they became like the closing, they became online, online retailers or the brands or just another girl. And I'm not saying this in a bad way, but it's the people's job and they do it in a good way. So it works for them. They became just brand, another tool to wear the brands and to show the looks sometimes well similar to other their colleagues so this yeah. is the time that i'm missing let's say and um i mean i completely agree with you on that and there's another shift that happened 2017 tiktok arrived you know changed completely the way we um we consume content you know the old lady television you know our old friend television uh, was already sort of um, surpassed by YouTube and YouTubers and now TikTok in the short form. I mean, that's, you know, that has completely disrupted the way we, we consume content. What was your first reaction to TikTok? Um, how did you understand it and how did you think it would impact fashion? Uh, to be honest, uh, until right now, I don't have any TikTok account and I never had it. I have my username registered because I, uh, my friend uh, CC, she was working at TikTok, and uh, she like begged me to create a username because she told me like you never know when you're gonna need it. So I just reserved it and I deleted the application after that. <laughs> uh, but to see around me. Uh, the influence that TikTok has and also not from just my friends who just scroll and see all the content, but from the people inside the industry who are telling more and more every day that they are gave up other platforms and they just focus on TikTok because the reach, the, the easiness of the platform, the way how easily you can become like the thing and the most popular um, person or content creator of the moment in just overnight, uh, sleep and wake up with the millions of views. And then also, to be honest, lots of the brands now switching their bigger budgets to TikTok when for the content creators rather than or other platforms, because it just, the moment, it's like, let's say the bite size information that you can take in a second, so you just need like a few seconds to discover and realize. And to be honest, again, I did not expect at the start TikTok to become this thing. And I was trying to ignore, if I'm honest, at the beginning. But at some point you reach, you ignore until you can't anymore. Yeah. So I cannot anymore. I mean, myself, I'm not there. But the thing when even when I have a, just a conversation with the brands, about like sharing information they tell me oh my god this would be so so good on tiktok so this that it becoming a next big thing it's just our lack of time of and not having enough of 24 hours is not enough anymore for everything we have to do like daily tasks and calls and talks and uh, everything and so it became very now at the moment and uh, compared to other platforms that could be considered as a mood board and yeah. keeping it in a way rather than the uh, off the moment thing, I think TikTok made the, this scrolling like super off the moment and super now because any time of the universe, I feel like TikTok never sleeps. I mean, of course, uh, it's the same for other platforms, but I feel like when I'm sleeping, on my platform where I'm represented, there is like, everything is fine, everything is calm, but TikTok is gonna, can explode overnight. Let That's me let ask you this, I find it very interesting what you're saying. Let me ask you this, um, with the, you know, the boom of TikTok, there's also been change in language, you know, bloggers, 
uh, Instagrammers, influencers, YouTubers, you know, and now it's sort of content creators. Do you consider yourself a content creator? And if yes, why? And if no, why? Um, that's a good question because uh, let's say even when the brands uh, wanna give me the title who I am for them or for the industry, sometimes they are trying to, uh, I mean, they have like different names about me. So they, uh, someone told me I'm like the bridge in between somewhere like a, a classic influencer and our content creator or, and then the media that is uh, more, let's say, um, um, a new thing that I did not invent, but it happened by itself. So if the wording for me, the words are content in a way that it has a content and thoughts inside. And for me, news, what I mostly share is also a content. So if this would be considered, and I think it's more and more considered like that, I think I am, even if I'm trying to be more factual in a way. So let's call it like factual content, like like that i like that a lot i mean you're you know you're you're a bit of a newsroom by yourself it's like you know, a new, reading a newspaper um exactly that's what comes from my grandfather who used to bring all the newspapers because he used to read everything and these titles and everything would make me so interested in that that i kind of this childhood memory i'm realizing that today um i there's something I wanted to, I mean, I think I probably said this to you already, but one of the reasons why I was so drawn, um, you know, into what you were doing and, and I really wanted to meet you a year ago, um, it's because I felt that you were fostering a very positive environment online. You know, I'm not going to name names, but I've seen different accounts and different voices, um, you know, great or not, it's, you know, to each their own, but I've seen you know, online, it's always easier to get more traction and get more followers when you create that tension and that, you know, sort of debate and um, that can turn out negative. And you've always tried to keep things positive. Um, uh, why was it important for you? And, and, and can you tell me more about how you wanted to create this community? Because I always say that you can you know, you can have a clear opinion of anyone online by looking at their comment sections. Exactly. And your comment section is generally positive and, and, and joyful, <laughs> you know? I think uh, even from the start, I mean, let's say my project is the kid of after pandemic. That already means uh, during pandemic, lots of stress <clears throat> and all the negativity and everything. So when I was at home sitting for all these two years almost, the one of the joys uh, besides eating a lot of food <laughs> was uh, watching because when I eat, uh, I was watching and even all the free time I was using like re-loving, refreshing my love of fashion once again because I am in the industry for 10 years now here in Georgia working with lots of brands, uh, working with them in different areas. And uh, at some point before pandemic, I reached the peak of the jobs that I had. So it really made me settle down and like, you know, like to be honest, sometimes thinking, oh my God, so good to be at home, but it lasted like for a few weeks or a month, let's say. And then when I wanted to get that excitement again, I digged back into the roots of why I started loving fashion. Who made me love fashion? And I can name the names of Karen Reutfeld, Tim Blanks, uh, uh, Franca Sozani slash Steven Meisel together and all this that, that I, I know we share with you. And uh, having uh, this and seeing uh, uh, on the same time, everything coming from all the accounts and from everywhere, everything about cancel culture that became a big pandemic thing altogether. Like we had a two pandemics, one uh, about COVID and second was the culture cancel pandemic. So it's like all together, which is still going on. And uh, I thought 
at the start, there was no thought, like planned thought, let's make like super positive account. No, but I realized that just what was coming to my mind, just posting and talking about that, people find out, okay, this guy really loves uh, this industry. I mean, the passion. And this guy really, uh, probably they understood I was honest about the opinion of the moment that I saw, because I mean, I after the great show watching, even if I'm home, I can be jumped from the happiness because I got that excitement again and I still love fashion that much. And of course, seeing the great editorial, like the recent one I posted today with Crazy Grand did for W Magazine. Oh, yeah. And these things just make me love fashion so much. I'm not saying that I'm blind and I'm not seeing the bad things, but so many people talk about that. I felt from the start let this place be some for someone like me who genuinely remembers that like we talk the specific issue of Vogue Italian cover and emotions and uh, uh, feelings about that so it was without planning I just it just happened to be become that positive side and sync and I think when uh, the right people I mean right people for that kind of direction and uh, the ones who I share the same similar uh, vibes and love of fashion, they found me, they stayed and still they share a lot with me. They keep commenting from on a, let's say, good side. And I'm one year in this, um, like as deep with the people who create everything that I was looking for all these years. I'm super honored to have a chance to speak with these people to be with them at the shows presentations dinners and have listened their stories and even if you know from outside and we all know and like say like fashion is cruel I mean I feel like every industry can be cruel but I got for myself for last one year I'm sure there's gonna be some drama and like some like negative things happening because I mean I have to go through a lot a lot and uh, uh this one year also having this positive feedback at some point i was thinking like am i dying or something because these people suddenly are like everyone who i even heard that they are not really nice people are so nice to me until now that this also energy coming from them keeps me on a positive side but i know it's the stories i know the dramas i know everything i know the egos of the people and here and there i already clash but i feel like it's everywhere so let my account be this zero per person something out of all the great fashion medias accounts influencers creators this specific poster so if you want to like pure fashion it's here I love that. Um, and, I, and I think it's super important as well. I want to ask you about the, the influence and how, you know, building your voice. It's influencing, you know, whatever we call it, uh, content creation. Um, actually, just uh, speaking of content, I would recommend everyone reading uh, Bill Gates' um, essay, Content is King, from 1996, like a manifesto. And it's so um, premonitory. It's absolutely amazing. But I want to ask you about building your voice. And because today, you know, uh, content creators, influencers are part of media budgets for brands. You know, they've completely been incorporated and accepted in the fashion ecosystem. When at first there was pushbacks, you know, bloggers were kind of like looked, you know, um, looked at as these weird kids who didn't know anything and you know um and now everyone is sort of welcomed and the importance of building your own voice a true authentic voice what has been have you had any challenges in in that sense um what was what what tips can you give to people who want to build a strong and authentic voice um in the fashion digital landscape I think the answer is already in question. Be strong, authentic, authentic voice. And authentic is the key. And being something that is, I mean, if you are great just posting, let's say the look number one from every 
kind of show or just from coming from from one show or one specific fashion if you are great just doing uh, like uh, uh, posting like the picture of the shoe of look number 25 of every show i mean something that is makes you feel comfortable makes you unique and I mean, something that maybe can be or cannot be found online as well. And you can create it in your very own way. This is, and main thing what I learned also from me is also the consistency and not giving up because, I mean, uh, I can say that I've been lucky that I started September 21 and in like end of December, I had, like if followers count in that case, like a success, like 5,000 followers, most of them being like industry leaders and like the people who I admire. And uh, I feel this consistent approach of what you do uh, and not giving up because some of the friends, my friends also working in other industries, uh, seeing my way and my journey, they tell me like, Becca, what is the key? How did you do? How can we apply this? Like one is like maybe film, want to be a film director and like shooting like movies, but she did not went to there yet because she's like looking, looking, looking. And at one day she will find her way. But to be honest, this is not my first try and probably I did five different other blogs in five different platforms throughout the years. And that one was like uh, something that, okay, I made it because I tried Tumblr, I tried WordPress, I tried, I had my blog on Tumblr called Glossy Newsstand and I was just posting magazine covers and for two years doing just for my pleasure, and then suddenly, two years after, I got the message from Katie Grant saying that she loves what I do and she wants to collaborate the back then for the Love magazine. So that example made me learn that to create your voice and make other people believe, at least you have to vo have voice yourself and you have to really believe what you say because no one's going to believe you. I mean, that's the way. And making something... Uh, very consistent it's like the we go to the workout maybe it sounds a bit uh like routine but for me my account is a became a routine but very very pleasurable i mean i it's my pleasure routine i don't get any more pleasure something from doing something other and it's also about doing it for yourself right i mean I've, I've, it was for like, me you know, yes for the start it was just for me yeah, like, a, you know, a bit like you have been down that road, you know, the WordPress, the Tumblr, you know, um, even Facebook, you know, we, we've, we've tried so many different ways just to sort of, it wasn't so much about reaching out and to an audience, it was because about finding the best platform to express yourself. Create myself because in my personal Instagram account, I was sharing all these fashion informations, my opinions, everything, and some people would understand, but then I thought, let's just for me, like you collect some crazy stuff and no one's gonna see beside you but you look and it's for your pleasure like my Vogue Paris collection of almost 10 years of carrying there it's for me I mean no one understands it's better than me so when I created this platform just three of the friends of mine who understand fashion more they followed me and they told me oh it's fun it's good but I was getting pleasure going there every night and seeing like those three posts that I've made that I see like this is like my happy place when I have time to relax like you would do like cooking and great doing like some great meal for yourself that's style not come for me and um you know now you're in a position of influence um it's how do you use this influence to talk about um more serious, let's say, topic, um, you know, because in fashion, we've always had this conversation, whether it's, you know, cultural appropriation, whether it's um, inclusivity, whether it's, uh, you know, raising any sort of awareness. So how, how are you using your position of influence and um, to, you know, sort of direct or, or send a message that is, um, that has a, a, a lot more weight? Let's say uh, as much as uh, my audience is rising and it's super fast, 
every day it becomes, uh, let's say, not more, I don't want to call it like responsibility, but to be aware of everyone because the audience is now combined of everyone from all around the world. Uh, first case, which I, um, I could uh, um, make an example was when the war started in Ukraine last February. It was just when I was becoming like the uh, 15 minutes of fame uh, getting during Paris Fashion Week, like my first big season and like being everywhere and being super excited while on the other side having uh, this incredible uh, war happening there in um, uh, aggression happening in Ukraine and having there my friends uh, who were like sending me like live videos of what was happening in front of their eyes. And in uh, the day of the war, I wake up and uh, I'm going to Milan and I should be the happiest man. And I remember the day it was a uh, 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 Prada show and there are a few other shows, but nothing really mattered that time. So I thought like, what is my response to that? Because I already have had an audience of maybe 25,000 people, but even without that, even if they were like 500, What's more specific for me was that I come from Georgia, which is in the same neighborhood as Ukraine, Russia, and all these post-Soviet countries. And being also the kid who experienced, not on that level, of course, I won't even compare what's the tragedy happening in Ukraine and being uh, uh, like, uh, I think, 17, 18 years old when uh, Russia attacked Georgia and having the fear of attacking like any moment uh, for a few days and weeks, uh, I felt a different responsibility to the audience. But first for myself, how can I do that? So what I did that, except like writing, like let's say Glory to Ukraine, which was uh, reshared uh, like with everyone. And it's just a small message, like super simple to make people uh, uh, realize that there is something happening in Ukraine. So go and find and research more and have your voice shared. I was, uh, let, let's say, like stopped posting uh, everything besides uh, sharing everything that would be like helpful because you remember there were the places uh, all around the Europe where you could collect the clothes or like everyday necessities or everything like humanitarian help uh, for the people going, uh, I mean, to be helped in Ukraine or the refugees. So let's say for five, six days, uh, I completely stopped everything uh, writing about the fashion. And I was thinking it was my very little thing. And I was like, not happy, but I saw that uh, uh, it had some impact because I saw a few people like writing me uh, like through you, we found out some place where we could bring all the uh, humanitarian help and everything. So the war was the first case, let's say, but then in general, with uh, you also knowing everything's happening with the brands or the people and their past stories and scandals, some of them recent, some of them past, I feel like speaking about the subject, if, and it probably should be also applied to others, that if it really matters for you and you know what to say about that, only say that at the moment. But if it's another random, you want to be like another hashtag, whatever the word comes after that, and you have no ways of explaining and being honest honest about that, it does not make sense. And I think having this real subject that you really care and applying to your audience in a way that with your language, explaining them why it matters for you, even if you don't say that it's not never going to matter for that. but Today, social influence became something that in uh, rest, like past would be like the, um, let's say like politicians or some opinion leaders or writers or even like the Hollywood stars whose opinion and one word would change as things. Today, me, you and everyone who creates uh, the content in digital or um, just in print, we are the voices. So, but let's keep it in a way that speak about the subject that really matters and not be just another hashtag. 
boy or a girl. I feel that way. I, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, we only have 10 minutes. So I want to ask you uh, very quickly, um, are you on Be Real? No. Have you secured your style.com? Uh, no, actually, that's a good uh, uh, reminder. I do that with every single app that comes up because I want to be panboy everywhere. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Do that. But okay. what will the what will the future of influence look like to you? Um, you know, is there a frontier that you know? Is there um, you know sort of a new world that can be discovered or in new ways? You know, we see like I just said, be real. Um, you know, the, the social media app. What to you um, is the future of influencing? Let's say it's, uh, I mean, it's quite hard for me to answer because I would then remember again the example of TikTok, which just appeared and it just crashed and uh, like overshadowed many, many things and changed the game completely. And uh, I mean, I know that be, even Be Real has its own um, uh like the um, um, thing behind that uh, that attracts people and everyone tries to be real there and i like this real thing uh, and it's more fun and more authentic but what i see the future is that uh, at some point uh, i feel like and at some point i already see people doing that uh i want it to be that everyone find their most uh, like preferred and uh, comfortable platform and be there and not be everywhere because if i feel i'm good at instagram let's say let me be there and don't demand me to also do the other content because it's always quality over quantity for me so i really wanna the future of influence i don't know if it goes that way but my wish would be everyone has oh and if i want let's say to find out like person x i know that okay this is the, I want to find uh, him or her at, at Be Real, like it's the brand with the clothes. So if I want to get like, let's say the perfect beige coat, we would go to Max Mara. And if you want to go to like uh, some perfect suit, you go to some uh, like classy brand. That's how I want to be to be uh, the future of uh, influence and the digital media. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I love this idea of being on a platform and building a community there and then sort of focusing on that. Um, unless you're Brian Boyk, you can do it all and you reinvent yourself. And you there, can... are, there are um, uh, examples and Brian is one of them that he can do that all and I have no idea how he managed this so good, all of them. But I mean, he does, but it's so natural when you look at him, there is... It's him. Yeah. So sure. I'm happy to be his friend in during one year. And he's been super supportive for me since the start, very, very start, and sharing and talking about me. So I'm always on his side. I share that with you as well because I work closely with Brian and he's in incredibly intelligent. Um, one last question before we go into the, the questions from the audience. Uh, what is style.com going to do in the future? What's coming up? What's uh, Tell us, give us everything. What's the goss? You're going to find out that in 27, six days, what's next for me? And um, it's going to happen in Paris and you will find out about that soon. But I mean, it's so close. I don't want to um, share it because I mean, it's not like super huge thing and I'm hiding something like mega exclusive, like uh, uh, someone's pregnancy or something like that. But uh, this is going to be like one of the, um, let's say, extension of the format of style.com with the same name, but... I mean, you will know it one of the first and you're going to be there and um, everything. You know, so. I will be, you know, we'll be calling you after this to know all the details. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do the questions now. So um, question one, with so many influencers nowadays, how do we break through? Is there space to come in with something new? I think I told that if you really think that, that what you do is uh, very it's not about being new but just be consistent and being uh really authentic and real what you really like. just share what you like and you will all find the community for them who it will be new because 
generations come and for someone, everything is going to be always new for new yeah. people. I agree with you. I think it's really all about, you know, not sharing, thinking of this is going to be a hit, just posting and being authentic. Um, question two, how can you stay relevant in this changing landscape? I mean, I'm asking this myself every single day. <laughs> Uh, let's invite Brian again about this <laughs> and uh, because it's the best to answer but for me I for me being relevant at the moment it's not a goal but it comes with the nature but uh, in it you cannot be relevant in every aspect even if world's gonna go just with everything digital or there are gonna be robots uh, uh, instead of us or anything or we would be like uh, restricted uh, doing anything rather than sharing everything on social media i would still be the magazine newspaper and uh, print kid so i mean there is a relevancy is relevant but it's not super necessary to be like the super ahead of time all the time, just going with the flow. I agree. And I also, I would just add as well that to me, what's more important is to be aware of your surrounding, aware of what's happening in the culture. If you know who are, you know, the cool people, you know, I'm really- Not limit yourself, yes. Being aware of what's going on around you, um, because that will only inform what you're doing, how you're perceiving things, and that will make relevant you know do both bbc and daily mail and uh twitter and uh like president of usa and also go check like someone who is becoming like the superstar from reality show yeah why what they have to say and watch both like white lotus or something like super like also like channel discovery or national geographic that's it I mean, I, I completely agree. I think it's about high and low and being completely aware of what's changing and how culture is evolving. Um, question for me, what are a few tips you would give someone who's trying to get out there and open a fashion-oriented account on socials? I would say just do it. Just yeah, do I mean, it. Exactly. That's what I did because one day I decided, like, I'm going to do it's it. That's it. And this was not sponsored by Nike, but just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I don't think there's anything else that you could say about it. It's like, if you really have something to say, don't think about the numbers. Don't think about, you know, how it's going to turn out. Um, just, just do it. Go out there and, and use your voice and, and, um, and inform yourself as well. I think an informed voice is always, um, a great sort of uh, um, is is greatly appreciated, you know. So inform yourself and just start doing it and enjoy doing it. Have fun doing it, you know. Um, I remember when I was doing Instagram uh, reviews, yes. uh, my Insta stories. I was having so much fun, and to me, it was just about that, you know. And I think people connect when they see that, and that's the way. And um, I feel about you. And that's why I said I really wanted to meet you is that I could sense that this guy is having a lot of fun and he's really, you know, doing it for himself. And to me, I that's mean, exciting. Never looked at my uh, follower count. And when it turned to 100,000 K, I remember a few days up after someone told me that it happened because, I mean, it just, oh, what happens on the under that not what about the numbers or stuff because still it's quality over quantity and i was already happy to have those first 100 followers because i okay if 100 people share something and like what i do that's it can be become more so it came you have a few more questions uh do you think TikTok will remain the uh, will remain in the fashion industry or will this trend go away? I think TikTok is going nowhere. As simple as that. Um, you Absolutely. know the way we, when you think of our um, attention span and you think of what TikTok is doing, um, you know short form videos are the way young generation consume information, whatever kind of information. And I think I'm I'm having a hard time believing that TikTok will go away. I think it's Absolutely just no, so no. symptomatic yeah. of the era and the era we live in that I don't see it going uh, away anytime soon. What, what would you say? 
Exactly. I mean, I completely agree. Even if I'm not there, I feel like one day uh, there could be something. Uh, I had like one fun thing in my mind to be uh, to do there, but then it went away again. Uh, so it's I think it's forever and it's going to be there with Instagram to be honest, because also the Instagram being so strong until now. And I'm like, I feel like Instagram is my digital home. And when I enter there, I feel like I'm entering with my friends there inside who understand me most about the stuff that I write there. And then TikTok is the same for so many people that I found themselves so well. And I know the people that kept themselves uh, like let's say alive and TikTok survived them because they found themselves there. Who they um, are. We're gonna wrap up, but why blue? Just tell us quickly oh, why. Like blue. Paris, that's it. Perfect. Nostalgia, nostalgia, Sarah Andelman, uh, like my church. That's it. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. Oh, we could have gone and, and kept on talking, as you know, but we're on a tight schedule and we'll say bye to everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.